Welcome back to another Wealth Journey episode. I'm gonna jump right into my paycheck routine and showing you how I'm building wealth and continuing to build on top of my first $100,000 in net worth. So to start off, $412.25 went straight into my 401k, which means my company put $206.13. And by now you already know what I'm about to show you on the screen. I'm gonna show you what my 401k is looking like with that money being added to it. So right now, at this time of me recording this video, it's a Wednesday at like 7 a.m. So the market actually just opened not too long ago. But anyway, it is up to $91,924.87. It has grown so much this year. At the beginning of this year, it was like, 60 something thousand it has skyrocketed throughout the year and i've been very grateful for that and so just remember every little bit is always going to count and that's what i continue to remind myself and i continue to show myself every single time i invest in my 401k my roth ira and my individual brokerage account speaking of which $700 went into my roth ira i'm so close to my goal i'm actually about to show you real quick Right now, my Roth IRA is at $21,052.38, and it is looking very good and very healthy right now. And I actually wanna show you the breakdown of how much money has gone into it so far this year. As y'all know, at the beginning of the year, I promised myself that I was gonna max out my Roth IRA. I am very close to doing so. I'm actually planning on doing it this month because I did come into some extra money, and I just need to wait for it to hit my bank account. But I wanna show something to you real quick right here where it says funding history i'm just looking down at my phone as you can see sixty three hundred dollars out of seven thousand dollars has already been invested for this year so i just need to invest another seven hundred dollars i will be good to go and i broke down the calculation i spent most of the year uh giving five hundred dollars to my roth ira and then i was like hmm if I keep doing $500 a month, I'm only going to get to 6,000. I got to up it somewhere. And so somewhere a little after the middle of the year, I started ramping this up to $700. And as you can see, it worked out pretty beautifully. So I will close this out before the end of the month and not have to worry about maxing out my Roth IRA for the rest of the year. And I can put my assets, my cash assets that is elsewhere. Just in case you're curious about what I'm investing in, I'm investing in the simplest and best things in the world. So Apple, Microsoft, VOO, and VTI, keeping it super simple. I say this pretty much every video, but in case you're new here, that is what I'm invested in within my Roth IRA. And that is not my idea. That is an idea of Ian Dunlap's. All I've done was adopted that idea and put it within a part of my net worth. And that has proven to be a very good concept in which I have been investing. So that was my first paycheck within the month. So I'm actually about to get a YouTube paycheck and I plan on putting that YouTube paycheck to good use. And by good use, I mean toward investing. Like purely, this will be the first time actually that I've used the whole YouTube paycheck towards investing. So I'm thinking of putting it directly into my individual brokerage account and buy up some things. Right now the stock market is going crazy, but randomly throughout the week, I noticed there's like dips. So one day I would have gained like a thousand dollars, but then the next day I'll lose like $600 in value. So I'm taking those opportunities during those dips and I'm going to buy up some Microsoft, some Apple. I haven't really figured out exactly how many shares I'm going to buy of what, but I do plan on sending that money over to my individual brokerage account, which I will actually show you a screenshot of right now. That account is $35,007.74, and it is up 144.42% since the year of 2020. I just want y'all to see how possible it is to take a little bit of your money, put it into something big, like bigger than you, a big company on things that you're already using. I'm already using my iPhone. <clears throat> I already use Microsoft products. I already use Google every single day. You get what I'm saying? NVIDIA and things like that. These things are no brainers to invest in. I've just been doing it for a long time and I've been holding it for a long time. So these actually grew very, very quickly. This is what I'm talking about. A little bit of money goes a long way when you invest it in the right places and you get into those investments at the right prices. So I'm just really excited about that. It's really a great feeling to wake up and see how much money my money has made me. And that's a crazy thing to say, but it's true. So just to put it in perspective, I put $14,322.98 in over the course of time. I didn't do it all at once, but over a course of five years, I put in $14,322.98. And what this account did was it brought me back an additional 
$20,684.77. That is amazing because sure I did a little bit of research to get into these companies and everything, but at the same time, really all I did was put my money into those companies and into those corporate giants and just let it sit there and grow through the cyclical nature of the stock market through 2020 through 2022 when all the pullbacks were going on i was like whatever i'm gonna just keep buying and holding buying and holding and it's simple but it's not easy and so i, I bring all these things up because it doesn't take much of course i have bills and other things and other places my money is going so not only do i have bills but i have entertainment i have fun i spend time with my girlfriend i do a lot of things other than you know investing and building my net worth with my money is what i'm getting at I also donate money and a lot of money to my church you get what i'm saying so these are the things that we need to be talking about because little by little that'll get you well past your first 100k in net worth and then you know what happens after your first 100k it builds up like crazy it really snowballs and turns from a snowball into a gigantic boulder and it knocks everything out in the way of you that's how i see it it knocks down any of your financial problems that would have been there had you not had that nest egg of money and i just think it's a great thing and i bring that up because i have a few milestones coming up my 401k is almost $100,000. I believe it will hit $100,000 before the year is out. There's a chance it might not, but even if it doesn't, it will be super, super close. So I would even be happy with that because at the beginning of the year, I didn't really have an expectation for what I thought my 401k would end up being. But right now, going from 60 something thousand dollars to almost 100,000 uh, something dollars by the end of the year, it is a great thing to see. And then to add to that, I'm about to get my Roth IRA 100% maxed out for the year of 2024. That's super exciting too. And then I'm putting the plan together for next year, as y'all might have heard in my previous video, where I'm actually going to be focusing my money more heavily on certain types of investments to get more dividends and continue growing my net worth even more. But I had to learn a lot of my financial lessons and a lot of things about investing completely by myself. And of course, I would take the time to read books and watch a lot of videos and learn from a lot of people who were smarter than me. And that took me into a lot of different directions. And it really took me a long time, I feel like, to kind of find my financial rhythm, if you will, in terms of what came most naturally to me. And for me, you know, I've been into crypto. I've been into stocks. I've been into ETFs. I've been into businesses. I've been into all these different areas of life when it comes to trying to produce more money and the one thing that has come the most natural to me has been investing in the stock market and that would make sense because i'm a numbers guy always have been and it's something that i can pick up on really quick i'm good at picking up on patterns and so i say that to say you don't have to do this alone because there's different stages of personal finances, which I actually talk about in my free course that I actually have here on this channel, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But there's a stage where you're just trying to get on your feet and go out on your own and be alone and not have to rely on anybody. And then you're in survival mode where you're trying to figure out how to make sure you pay your bills and then still have money left over for fun and for going out to eat and things like that. And then you're trying, there, there's another stage where you're trying to figure out how to invest. And then there's another stage where you're trying to figure out how to invest for other people to make sure that they're well off even when you're gone. And then there's a whole part where you're trying to sustain your wealth and sustain everyone else's wealth and make sure that nobody ever has to worry about anything financially again there's no debt there's no giant there's no corporate issue there's nothing at work or outside of work that can threaten your financial situation and that's where i want us all to get to but you don't have to do it alone because trying to figure all that stuff out by yourself could literally take a lifetime no matter how many books you read no matter how many videos you watch because at the end of the day you have to actually apply this information to your life and the best way i can personally think to come up with a solution for this problem because there's a, a number of problems there's problems where 
most people can't afford to pay their bills because of inflation and then we blame that on not getting a raise at work and not getting what we want out of life and not getting the amount of money that we feel that we deserve that we're worth getting based off of our skill set based off of our intellect and that is a very true statement however why don't we use some of that intellect to figure out a way to make more money for ourselves why not use that intellect to create a collective group that's actually going to discuss uh, personal finance issues. I'm getting fired up so I can barely talk right now. But check this out. Why don't we have a group together where we talk about these things and talk about real life issues where we don't feel dumb, we don't feel stupid, we don't feel like we're crazy for putting our business out there. We're in a group that actually builds each other up and encourages each other and shows each other the way. Because the thing is, if 21 year old me had current me as a mentor, I would be so much further along than I am right now. I'm talking, I'd probably be well past my first million if I had myself as a mentor when I was 21 years old. But at the time, I didn't have that type of mentorship. I had other type of mentorship as far as leadership at work and getting better at my job and becoming the best leader I can possibly get. I definitely got that type of mentorship and that led to more money and more opportunities and more of a work-life balance and that's fantastic. But when it comes from a financial perspective, you need another skill set. You need to know what to do with that money once you get that money. There are so many people now who make six figures who are living paycheck to paycheck, can't invest nothing, can't save nothing. What's the point? So I did create a group. I created the exact group that I'm frustrated that doesn't exist because I'm over here telling you that you need to do something about your situation. I'm gonna do something about the situation, about the fact that there's no collective group right now that can get online right now and discuss and talk and share their wins and share their screenshots of their investments and how much is growing without wanting anything from one another except for information, collaboration, and camaraderie. And the group is called Wealth Journey Collective. And I want people in this group to be wanting to leave inheritance for their kids, for their wives, for whoever's left behind them. I want them to leave something behind in this world that shows the people they care about what they really meant to them so that they don't have to struggle. I'm not saying that we should leave things for people so that they can feel entitled to never have to work for anything or never have to learn anything, but I am saying how many people die without leaving their family anything, no life insurance, no nothing. And to me, life insurance is the bare minimum when it comes to leaving things after for somebody because the thing is you are grieving when you lose somebody and I feel like if I lose somebody I should be able to take it however much time I need to off of work and of course that's limited at work wouldn't it be nice to have enough left over to be able to take as much time as you genuinely needed to grieve you get what I'm saying but it's also about legacy. It's about keeping things in the family. It's also about having investments for the family to continue to make the family grow, to make the family in a better financial situation. So whenever a distant cousin somewhere or some other family member needs your help, it's nothing to take a little bit of profit off of one investment and help them out and then keep it moving. This isn't about building handouts. This isn't about giving people whatever they want. It's about being in a position to be able to help the people that you love and care about and it's about yourself and another topic is and i'm not going to go too far on this tangent but being financially responsible is a form of self-love do you do you notice that when you've had a rough week and you want to have a drink or you want to go out to eat or splurge at the mall or spend money on something that you absolutely should probably not spend money on at that given moment because when you have certain emotions you should not make certain financial decisions well check this out if instead you put some of that money into an investment because i believe you can do both you can invest a little bit and you can have fun a little bit or you can invest a lot or have fun a lot but i don't see a whole lot of in between but they call that self-love. They call that treating yourself. You know what I'm saying? When you go on vacation and when you spend far more than you were planning on spending on that vacation because you wanted to feel good and you wanted to treat yourself, then you go back home after your vacation struggling to pay your bills. 
That's not self-love. That's self-sabotage. And that's some that's talks that we need to have. Instead, we're having talks with people that we don't want to be like from a financial perspective. They might be great people to be around. They might be great support systems. But when it comes to personal finances, you need a separate support system of people who actually know what the heck they're talking about, who actually have certain goals that can help get you to where you want to get. And you help each other as a collaborative, collective group. And that is so important and I have a way for you to access such a group. It is linked down in the description and I would love for you to join along with every one of us in the wealth journey within this group called Wealth Journey Collective. I found in life that the most successful people in the world have strong teams behind them. So I want to build a team, a team of people who care about each other and want to see each other succeed and want to share each other's wins and congratulate each other and ask each other questions and ask me questions and get on live calls and have group discussions. This is a vision that I have and it will come to fruition. I just want you to be part of the journey. Right now, if you become a member before Christmas, you will be a founding member and you will have special perks that no one else gets. So you're gonna really want to become a member before Christmas of 2024. These are things that I put my money towards from my paycheck because even though I have bills and other things, I'm building my dreams on the other side of things. And it's a stance that I will not back off of. It is something that I'm very passionate about and I just wanna help as many people as possible. But I'll tell you what, if you wanna learn more about the different stages of personal finances, I really encourage you to take my free course, which is actually right here on this channel and you can check it out right here.